NASCAR is a ruthless business. My goodness. Bear with me, guys, if I sound a little bit off. I uh, got sick in the middle of the day yesterday, and it carried on through the night and into the morning. So uh, I will try to talk as much as I can. Hopefully, my uh, voice and throat and everything will hold up. But if I sound depressed, it's not because Kyle Busch is joining RCR. I'm actually very okay with that. I just, I simply cannot raise my voice louder than kind of what I'm at right now. So I apologize. Um, but we have, to, we have a lot to talk about. This is going to carry on from the video we made the other day about Kyle Busch joining RCR. Uh, it is official now. He has joined RCR, but some of the dominoes have fallen in terms of who's going to drive what, what's going on. And, uh, and the announcement came and it, it's, it's just really interesting to me. I have a lot of uh, like opinions and thoughts about it, um, both good, both bad, uh, from different perspectives, different angles. So let's see how it goes. I want to give a shout out to all the Patreon members, as always, for supporting the channel. You guys are the absolute best. And also, thank you for supporting me when I sign like a dying cow. I sound so disgusting. I can hear myself. Like, it just sounds awful. So I apologize that you guys have to listen to this and, and you don't get my normal upbeat self. But um, let's get into it. So... The, the worst kept, well, not worst kept secret. Jordan Bianchi did a really good job with his reporting, and Kyle Busch is going to RCR. We knew that last week, but what, what was going on? Who was going to drive the 18? What car was Kyle Busch going to drive? What was, the, what was going on? Like, what happened to Tyler Reddick? Like, all these things had to be answered. And so, Kyle Busch will be driving the number eight car. Sponsors are to be determined. So, we don't know who the sponsors are, but then this is the most interesting part and this is why i started the video saying that it's ruthless is that tyler reddick informed rcr essentially of him joining 2311 racing i don't remember if it was the hour before that announcement came or if rcr found out during the announcement when denny hamlin and tyler reddick were on that live stream i don't remember exactly what the details were there but point point of the story is rcr richard childress the team everyone didn't know Tyler Reddick was joining 2311 until the day, the time, like at that very moment that it happened. Fast forward to today and our RCR in the most petty way possible do the same exact thing to Tyler Reddick. I've never really seen this before in professional sport like this. Um, it's petty, but it, I mean that that it, it is what it is. Like that's the business. And uh, so Richard Childress said he informed Tyler Reddick an hour before the announcement this morning. And this deal was done for a while, and Childress did not tell Tyler Reddick at all until the hour before they announced it. That's done on purpose. That's not done to be nice. That's not done to uh, to be courteous. That that is that is a uh, excuse my language. That is a <laughs> you you know you get what you get essentially. That's that's what Richard Childress said to Tyler Reddick, uh, basically with his actions. And so next year is going to be tasty because Richard Childress. And Tyler Reddick are still going to be uh, a team. Like Tyler Reddick will still be at RCR. He has a contract with RCR. Uh, it looks like Richard Childress is going to get a third charter. Now I am not an expert when it comes to charters. I never bothered trying to learn all the ins and outs of it because it was always so confusing when they introduced it way back in the day. But apparently, you can lease a charter. So what Richard what, what Richard Childress is going to do is lease a charter assume it could be the 33 or something i don't know what it's going to be but you know the lisa charter reddick will be in that car it'll be like a one-year stop gap i don't know how much development's going to go into that car what they're really going to try and do there but i think tyler reddick's gonna have to go through a year of just kind of this awkward kind of just weirdness because like you get moved into a different car you're still on the same team you have kyle bush who's going to drive your eight car that you just got booted out for all because you made the decision to join 2311 racing and toyota in 2024 ruthless business it's going to be very awkward next year and uh, you could see like when you don't give a heads up to your car owner uh when the car owner wants to be petty he'll be petty and get his revenge and so i'm not saying it's right or wrong i don't have really a massive opinion on it i'm just saying what happened and if you know anyone comes out from whether it's rcr or reddick and say oh yeah you know We'll still work together, yada, yada, yada. Behind the scenes, it's really like a, wow, F you, dude. Like, you know, on both sides. Like, Reddick just, you know, keeps RCR in the in the, the dark. And then RCR do the same exact thing to him and boot him out of the eight car for next year. So, um, Ruthless, I kind of like it, honestly. Uh, drama, I like it. It is what it is. Now, another thing about this announcement is that uh, RCR, not, I keep saying, I keep calling him RCR. Richard Childress. Gave Brexton Bush, Kyle Bush's son, a 
paper, a contract to uh, drive for him in the future. If Brexton's ever good enough, I'm sure he'll be in the RCR development program. Um, that that is somewhat known, and that you gotta be honest. That's why certain drivers make the, move, the moves for long-term gain as well. So if Kyle Busch going back with Chevy and have his son, uh, if he is good enough in the future to drive in NASCAR, then you know his son has an opportunity. His son would have an opportunity anyways. But uh, another big note on this is that the truck team, Kyle Busch's truck team, KBM, will be going to Chevy. Uh, and so that's a really good move for Chevy because, again, Toyota is not just losing Kyle Busch in, in the 18. They're also losing the, the truck team with KBM as well. So that's going to make me jump into Joe Gibbs Racing. And I don't have an issue with what Kyle Busch did. You guys know my opinion on it. I don't think he can win a championship at RCR. I have 20 years of proof that tells me otherwise. You know, like base or that tells me that he cannot win a championship at RCR. If he can do it, I wouldn't be surprised because I think he's the one that might be able to um, it, it, to lift that team up into the next level. But it's been 20 years. I have not seen anyone other than Dale Earnhardt Sr. do it. I'm not going to sit here and say he can do it. So if I was him, I think out of all the options on the table for Kyle Busch, it's probably the best decision for long term and short term. The eight car has been competitive this year, so let's see if Kyle Busch can do it. I just don't think it's on the same level as, you know, obviously Hendrick and Gibbs and all and, and all those guys. But he's just, he's leaving Gibbs. Like where else you get if you leave in Gibbs, you can't really get much better than Joe Gibbs Racing and Hendrick Motorsports. So like, you know, you gotta find what's what's best for you. And I think RCR is a good move for him. So I don't have a problem with Kyle Bush going to RCR. I hope he does great. I hope they make the eight car black and they, they keep it black. Cause him driving the eight car under RCR is going to piss off so many of the older Earnhardt diehard fans. And it makes me very happy to watch that because they never grew up with the times and they're still too dumb to realize that Kyle Busch plays a character and they hate him for no reason. All probably for wrecking Jr. in 2008 at Richmond. Uh, but now to have basically the closest thing, and Richard Childress said this himself, to have the closest thing to Dale Earnhardt Sr. at RCR is really cool. And I really like that. So great move for them. Let's talk about Joe Gibbs Racing because this is why I don't agree with it. From their perspective, I think it's a really stupid move. You're losing your best driver ever. You guys can debate me on that if you want. If you want to say Tony Stewart's the best driver at Joe Gibbs Racing, you want to say Matt Kenseth or whatever, or Carl Edwards, I, I don't know, whatever you want to say. It's definitely not Carl Edwards. He wasn't there long enough. Kyle Busch is the best driver to ever grace Joe Gibbs Racing. He is what turned Joe Gibbs Racing into the modern day powerhouse that they are. And so I still personally do not agree with Joe Gibbs Racing just letting him go. Now, You'll never know behind the scenes how hard they pushed for sponsorship to keep Kyle Busch there. Basically, what's happening now is that Ty Gibbs is going to drive that 18 car. And I just personally don't think that's a good move. I, I just... I, listen, Ty Gibbs can be a superstar, most likely will be a superstar in NASCAR in the future. But this just puts an ungodly amount of pressure on him. Like, an un, just an unfair amount of pressure. Because he's going to step into that 18 car. He's going to be expected to deliver results off the bat in his rookie season. He's been filling in for Kurt Busch so far. He's not been able to deliver really anything of note because he hasn't driven these cars. He needs more time. He needs a little bit more experience. I always said 2024 would be a good year for Ty Gibbs to jump in to Joe Gibbs Racing, straight into Joe Gibbs Racing. I think this is going to be a little bit too early. I also think the pressure of having to replace, I cannot stress this enough, the pressure of having to replace the greatest driver that has ever graced your organization is something that you can't prepare for. And unfortunately for Ty Gibbs, the media and the fans are going to place that expectation on him to win races off the bat. Because that's just how it is when you join a team like that. We don't know what the sponsorship's going to be like for Joe Gibbs Racing, but they're also losing the Toyota affiliation with KBM. Like, they're losing a lot to lose your best ever driver and replace him with essentially Joe Gibbs' grandson. I get it. Family is amazing. Austin Dillon's been in the three ride forever because he is Richard Childress' grandson. And we've seen how that worked out. It hasn't really worked out that great. Austin Dillon's fine. He deserves to be in the Cup Series. He's, he's a decent driver, but he's not really done anything in that three car. Well, to be fair, some of it's RCR, some of it's Austin Dillon. Let's see what Kyle Busch can do. Can Ty Gibbs really overcome all the expectations that will be on him as a kid? Because he is a kid and he's going to have to go into the 18 car 
with Truex as his teammate and Chris Rebell there, who's starting to. Chris Rebell's going to take more of a leadership role in that team. And Denny Hamlin as well, who's the true leader now, really. Denny Hamlin and Truex are the true leaders of that team. And he's going to have to go out there and compete right away. And I just think for your first season, there's a possibility of like a Joey Logano situation happening where you just rush Logano in too early and it, it doesn't really work out. Again, I wish Ty Gibbs all the best. It's really cool that Joe Gibbs has been able to get his grandson into that ride. Probably a much cheaper salary. I get all that. But this just feels like the wrong move, in my opinion, to put Ty Gibbs in that car. If he's able to win races next year, great. But I'm just not expecting that. I'm expecting a, a, a steep learning curve. Because, guys, I can use an example, okay? So the last driver to have this, uh, I would say, superstar, like, uh, potential on him, right? The last driver, in my opinion, to have that amount of potential was Chase Elliott. And Chase Elliott was running in the Nationwide Slash Xfinity Series, I think it was, I, I don't remember if it was two years or one, but he also drove that 25 car for a few cup races before Jeff Gordon retired, and then he came in, he had to replace Jeff Gordon, Hendrick Motorsports' best ever driver, and Chase Elliott had to replace him again to the 24 car, and look how long it took Chase Elliott to win a race. He didn't even win a race in the 24 car. He had to go to the 9 car. He never won a race in the 24. It took him three years, essentially, to win a race. And Chase Elliott was the, the prodigy, the, the son of Bill Elliott, the superstar in waiting, dominates the Nationwide Series, heads into the Cup Series, but it took him time. Yes, he was competitive and he was able to compete and finish top five and finish second and all that, but it took him time. Now what we see Chase Elliott as, you know, six, seven years into his Cup Series career, he's kind of like that veteran presence in the, in the prime of his career trying to put forth whatever he's trying to put forth, win championships and all that. Ty Gibbs is going to have to go through that same learning curve, but the expectation, just as it was on Chase Elliott, was you have to win off the bat. You replace Jeff Gordon. Ty Gibbs, you have to win off the bat. You replace Kyle Busch. It's the same thing. It's the same exact thing. Two young drivers who have to replace the greatest ever driver in that organization. The organizations we're talking about are not small organizations. This is the two best organizations in the sport. Chase Elliott struggled with it. Ty Gibbs is going to struggle with it. If he proves me wrong, he might be better than I thought. He might win a hundred damn races, but to have the level of expectation that he's going to have, I think this is a really, really careless move on terms of Joe Gibbs to place the pressure on Ty like that. I really would have liked to see him in 23XI for a year or, you know, one more year in Xfinity to place him right back into that 18 car is not the right move in my opinion. I, again, I hope he does well. Overall, guys, what do you think? Comment down below. Again, the negative side for me comes with uh, Joe Gibbs Racing and what they did. It has nothing to do with Kyle Busch. I think Kyle Busch going to RCR, good for him. Do I believe he can win a championship at RCR? No. I hope I'm proven wrong. But in terms of the options that he had, I think great move. And I really want to see him succeed with that 8 car. Because we've seen the 8 car do well. Austin Dillon in the 3 probably will still run 15th. But if Kyle Busch in the eight can actually do well, compete for races, then you never know. Maybe maybe he can do something there. And to be fair, he hasn't really had a great season in the 18 this year with Joe Gibbs Racing anyways. It was time to go since Joe Gibbs Racing didn't want him and moved to Ty Gibbs. So good for Richard Childress Racing. Good for Kyle Busch. Because also for the long term for RCR, bringing a level of driver like Kyle Busch is something really good for the organi organization and for the team. It gives them the boost, the morale lift of, you know what? We just signed Toyota's best ever driver. You know, we can compete. Like, that should be everyone's, like, thought process in the, the, the organization is, who cares about Hendrick? Who cares about Gibbs? Stuart Haas Racing? Penske Racing? Yeah, who cares? We're RCR. We're a legendary team. Let's go ahead and try to compete for a championship, something we haven't done in 20 plus years. So, good move for them. The negative side of this, I think Joe Gibbs dropped the ball. I personally, I, I hate this move for Joe Gibbs Racing. I wish Ty Gibbs well, but I don't like this move for Joe Gibbs Racing. I don't like this move for Ty Gibbs. I think it puts way too much pressure on him uh, at an early, early age with very little experience in the Cup Series. To just ask him to go into that premier ride right away and compete off the bat. Now again, it hasn't been confirmed that Ty Gibbs is going to be in the 18. 
but it's basically been confirmed okay you guys don't they, no they're not putting anyone else it's gonna be ty gibbs so uh guys let me know what you think in the comments down below am i overreacting am i right am i wrong let me know what you think do you agree do you disagree comment down below i think my voice and everything held up a lot better than i thought so i'm really proud about that if i'm still feeling good by tomorrow i will see you guys tomorrow last time i got really sick i had to take a few days off because i simply couldn't talk so hopefully I can still talk. I've been talking for 15 minutes. I've been pretty fine. So hopefully I'll be able to do that. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy the rest of your day. And subscribe for new. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe if you're not already. Peace out.